Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson, who, Howdy. who before we came on here, posited an interesting question, and that question was? Do you get migraine headaches, and also can you read in the car without well, getting a headache? Well, I don't get migraine headaches, but I can't read in the car. Because I, I, I get nauseous. So, same here. I get uh, like a weird uh, nauseous head thing. And that's because uh, we are adjusting to both the moving things outside the car. Really? And stationary page. Yeah, I've been reading a lot about headaches, especially migraines, which women get um, two-thirds more than men do. And it's a puberty. Well, the reason is we cause them. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but especially once we hit puberty. Yeah. You know, can we now? Can we now? Can we now? But <laughs> that, to, and also, it is the biggest health complaint, second only to back pain, next to back pain. Uh, in Marjorie the has massive back pain. Does she have compression fractures? I just found out. No, I no, no, no. I don't know what she, she's just got. Her, she her back is all screwed. I mean, she could well, that, she could have it operated on. That's yeah. she could always do that. But she's she's eighty, and you know, at our age, you really don't want to go through major surgery. No, and also, I mean, unless she's going to be you know an Olympic gymnast, which I I doubt is on her to do list for twenty four. Right. Um, you can find ways to supposedly for this kind of back pain these fractures I have it's not much you can do to it you can take Celebrex which um, I'm taking now which I never thought I would and also you can uh, do some physical therapy well I had I had a I had a horrible fall about maybe five months ago four months ago that was in that with the green screen yeah with I wasn't didn't fall with the green screen no, I'm, but I was thinking you got caught in the green screen. You were telling me about it. No, no, but I, I fell, and yeah. I bruised my, my knee, which is still, I still got have, not scars, but the bruise signs there. They're, yeah. It's it, it scraped on, on, because I was wearing shorts, and uh -huh. I scraped on the cement, and it took forever for that to heal. But I yeah. also screwed up my knee. Which to this day is killing me, you know. Yeah, I can't walk as well as I used to. You know, it all and it all had to do with that fall. And uh, when old people fall, it becomes a big problem because you just don't heal that well. That's it. Like I really messed up. I was going through some fainting spells because I was taking trazodone to sleep, and it lowered my sodium levels so much that I would faint, and I fainted in the middle of the night, twisted my ankle so badly, Ooh. I still had the bruise. Oh yeah, it was awful. And then it healed wrong, which I think contributed to these compression fractures. Because I would be, after I was healing and I could walk, I would look down and it's like, well, my leg is turning differently than it used to. So I knew yeah. something was yeah. changing, but uh, yeah, you know, these bodies, they should have a better warranty. I, I think mine is a torn meniscus. But as you get older, it's harder for you to, you know, to heal. It, 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 yeah. It's ridiculous. And I, you know, it that fall kind of changed my life a lot. I don't know how, it but, it, you know, I, I, I get certain. I'm, to begin with, I'm afraid to go walking. See, that's it. it, it what, what it does to your confidence is the yeah. biggest thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, and and I was for a while using a cane, and I told people I don't need it for walking, but to have it gives me a certain level of confidence that you know if I fall I maybe have something to hold on to. Although that's it. Who knows? You know, I don't do it anymore. 
but I don't walk as far either. You know? Yeah. And because I, when going downstairs, I would have my little baby uh, niece, mm -hmm. and I would say, just jokingly to her, narrating, you know, what you should do. Here's how to have a great life. I would say, and always use the handrail. So I got used to using the handrail on steps, and now, now I still do it. Well, I, I, I use a handrail all the time. If there isn't a handrail, I get a little frightened. You yeah, know. Well, or you can kind of cheat by leaning against the wall well the thing is up in this up in this park that i used to go to and walk around there were stairs and most of them had handrails but yeah. some of the stuff coming down were small little side stairs and they didn't have mm -hmm. any handrails yeah and, and i had to so almost i had to almost lean down to the rocks on either side so i wouldn't fall because i look for a handrail now i need a i always need a handrail and, yeah, and, 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 what, and I tried to think about when, when that happened, but it, it yeah. did. One day, I just, uh, handrails seemed like a good idea to me. Yeah, once you've had a fall like that, it will change your approach to mobility. And yeah. you'll just be a little more yeah. cautious. Like, I used to think nothing, even seven, eight years ago, of climbing a tall tree, because I've always been kind of agile that way. Yeah. Um, but now I would definitely think twice before I climbed even a, even a not so tall tree, because it's it just it affects your consciousness. I don't think I could even start climbing a tree now, you know. Yeah. Because well, I'm, I would I'm, climb a tree. I'm before. really well. You're how old now? You're sixty. Uh, sixty-three. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're twenty years younger than me, basically. Yeah. Well, and it it just changes. You need, I think we not need something like that. When you have something like that. By the like way, welcome happen. back to the old people's program, folks. Yeah, I know. I hate to fall into this. I'm taking silly bricks, you know. <laughs> it's just, but it's a, uh, so I try to um, edit my conversation from those old people references. But <laughs> you end up talking about the Dodgers, you know. <laughs> well, we're at the age where Xanax is a vitamin. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Don't leave home without it. <laughs> and then what's the other one? Um, do you have trouble sleeping? Do I have trouble sleeping? Well, no, I take this pill called um, pregabalin for, for, my, for neuropathy. <laughs> for neuropathy. And uh, it puts me to sleep. That's the one that puts me to sleep. Marjorie takes a cocktail. I mean, she's got a Xanax and she's got a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a, the thing for sinuses, you know, uh, Benadryl. Oh yeah, Benadryl knocks a lot of people out, not myself. Oh, believe me, sometimes she can't go to sleep, but she's got all this stuff in her. Yeah, and it's annoying, man. I, I get so annoyed when I can't go to sleep because all I do is ruminate about every mistake I've ever made in life and every, mm. every well, I, I don't I, ha I don't have trouble crazy. going to sleep. And I, if I, on the side of the bed, I have a vape. I have a vape, and uh -huh. if I can't go back to sleep, I and then I'm out like a light. It's you know, it's a what, what I can't remember what the kind of marijuana it is right now, but it's the kind that puts you to sleep, and it, and it, it and that, that that's terrific, you know. Now see, that'd be the way to do marijuana. It doesn't give you the munchies, so that pesky weight gain doesn't. Well, happen. because you're sleeping, right? Unless Whatever you keep a sandwich by the bed, I don't think it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Door dash in the middle of the night. Yeah, door dash in the middle but of the night. Yeah. It amazes me how many uh, teenagers like uh, that have been around that were teenagers when Door Dash and those uh, food and meal delivery services came about. Now it's just a habit. I mean, it was a big deal when I was in college. To did order you see? Pizza. Did you see what teenagers are doing today? And what, young and people which? younger than that laxatives. For why? For weight loss. Well, oh man, without they well, can't that, get a that's the worst way to go for weight loss. Well, isn't it the same thing as one of those bypasses, but it's without the surgery? Because basically, no, not really, it's not really. All no. of, uh, it's making you poop a lot, you know. Well, that. But my friend who's had a bypass, she eat, still eats a lot. She just poops sooner, poops right after her meals, and so she's getting rid of them before they've had a chance well, to Well, the whole back. big new thing is, uh, is uh, what do you call it? The, the, uh, Ozempic? Ozempic, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that supposedly does work, 
you know. I mean, it's yeah. meant for, uh, I believe, for diabetics. That's uh, it. Well, and, and, uh, and now diabetics can barely lay their hands on it because everybody's using it for weight control. And the Hollywood people have latched on to Ozempic for weight loss. And it's, you know, and they'll pay top dollar. And so Ozempic's going... And by the way, the medical community, I saw some stuff the other day. They, they've adopted this as being a way to lose weight, Ozempic. Yeah, it's called off-diagnosis, I think. Uh, off-brand. Off-brand. Off -brand. Yeah. yeah. You're using and, it for uh, another reason. But I think right. the FDA is ready to approve it for weight loss. Or whatever's in it, you know. Well... Yeah, well, you can't just, I mean, you'd be silly as a drug man, as a pharma, to uh, not take advantage of that zeitgeist. If people everywhere are well, talking about a great weight loss drug it is. I, I think yeah. being overweight is uh, not a healthy thing. You know? It's not, and it's a, you know, and it does so much to people's self-esteem. You, you never had trouble with your weight, if I remember only, correctly. Only once when I was, uh, I graduated from high school, I graduated midterm, so in the middle of the Midwest winter, there was nothing to do except hostess ho hos and yeah. I gained 20 pounds, which on a person my height, you can yeah, tell. That, that's, that's, a a, lot that's a winter. lot for you, yeah. Yeah, and then, but then it became summer, and it's so much easier to lose weight in the summer, and I wasn't depressed anymore. It was depression eating for the most part. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, and when people are confounded by their future or their relationship or whatever, then it will... What I never understood was people who were fat and were coke addicts. I know! Like, what was Velvet's Who eats line? when they have coke? Right. Yeah, so and, and it's, the old, it's the old Bubbles, Larry Bubbles Brown joke. He was, we knew somebody um, who was fat and did a uh, lot of coke, and he said, "What does he cut his coke with? Butter." I know. <laughs> I remember that. And one. then, then that whole joke just came down to one line: butter. Butter. Yeah. <laughs> I have so many bubularisms that Lisa Carr and I will sometimes text each other with one word: bub things. Yeah. Bubism. Yeah. Bubble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it. it uh, uh, I, I never. I, but I. If you want to lose weight. You should, Coke is probably not a bad, I'm not telling you to do Coke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm the one telling you not to do Coke. I have experience. Yeah. Well, I mean, I used to have a little bottle with me I carried all the time. One of those little brown bottles with a little what? flip out spigot. No, and it had the spigot on it. Oh, I never could use those. I'd end up like dumping a half a gram, and that which doesn't go well. No, what you did, what you would do is you would take it and turn the thing, and it would fill up this little thing, and then you would turn it more, and then you, right, and never you could worked. carry that thing wherever you went, and you could literally palm it, yeah, and get yeah. a hit, and that's yeah. what I that's what I use. I was, you know, I I don't think a morning went by that I didn't have. I wasn't high on coke. I couldn't do a show at five in the morning. You kidding me? Well, you know what? A friend of mine used to call it energy. Of course, he overindulged in it. Yeah. But it does. It gives you a little pop, you know, which yeah. if you stop there. Well, I also cut it, too. I also cut it and made it go a little further. Yeah. Uh, with so. mannitol, that's the big thing, right? Yeah. But then you're yeah. crapping your brains out. Exactly. It's a laxative. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the only, I think everything as far as legalization should be legal. Um, maybe not, maybe not Molly because Molly is being made and Molly uh, is what? It's ecstasy. The new generation. E ecstasy. It may have a new. Wait a minute. Right Ext I did, did ecstasy and I checked with a doctor and asked him about ecstasy and he said nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I I loved ecstasy. I'm oh, ecstasy was wonderful. Everything oh, felt yeah. better. I mean, yeah, literally everything. felt better. You know, this and rug is wonderful. I never noticed wow. how, how the shag felt, you know. Yeah, and you know, the way I could tell that ecstasy was coming on was my smell, my sense of smell became so acute. Like, I could smell a pizza parlor three blocks away. Really? And that's when you knew the fun's about to happen. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I had a, a woman I knew who had ecstasy, and she had liked to have me do it before we had sex. And I had to agree. It, it oh. If it didn't make sex better, at least you felt it did. Yeah, exactly. The sensation yeah. is what it's all about. 
the perception. Yeah. Yeah. I, because if you're I, a lousy lay, you're always going to be a lousy oh. lay. Okay. <laughs> you don't have the imagination. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. But yeah so, and, uh, once we did it in a uh, one of those places where you go and there's a hot tub, personal private hot oh, tubs. Yeah. And so yeah. she did gave it to me there, and that was wonderful. Oh, yeah, it that is That was just wonderful. wonderful. If somebody, if one of the big farmers would start making it, uh, they oh, oh but man. folks, don't do it. I have to say that no. so that yeah. I don't get demonetized by. Oh. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, just avoid it. No, but but of all the drugs, uh, my doctor said to me, ecstasy doesn't present any real problems. It's not addictive, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, and uh, it is basically, they said it had no physical harm to you, you know. I mean, there are other things that do have physical harm to you, when, and when they say it, they're right, but uh, ecstasy wasn't one of them, and you never heard that much of an outcry about ecstasy. No, because everybody was too much in a good mood to complain. Yeah. <laughs> but if it was made by someone like, you know, Squib or uh, one of the major companies, um, I I would be inclined to do it again. But right now, I wouldn't so do any problem. drug today. And I'll tell you no, why, except for a pot, know, because, problem. but uh, any drug. And the reason I wouldn't is because they, they'll, they'll sell you some ecstasy, and just to give it a little extra zip, they put in, uh, what do you call it, uh, fentanyl. Fentanyl, yeah. And that, that's, you know, you don't want to take that chance. No, and I have a friend And that's that why I drugs, think. that's why drugs shouldn't be illegal. Because, because then you control, control them and the you, quality. You would have control of the quality, exactly. Yeah. And the FDA would say, too much fentanyl in here, you can't do that, you know. Yeah. And, and, and then I, you would be getting your drugs pure. You would get them as, as, as God intended. <laughs> but, I mean, and, I've said that for years. I think you probably even heard me say it on the radio show in San Francisco years ago, that I felt, for instance, heroin should be legal. Yeah. And the reason that, is is that uh, heroin is not the worst drug out there. No. The worst drug out there, for my money, is alcohol. It is. It is, you know, now that I'm away from it, I can clearly see that. Yeah, but alcohol. Uh, alcohol does more damage, ruins more families than any drug you can name. Organic damage is yeah. bad. Uh, but, you know, heroin, uh, it, there were a lot of misconceptions about it, and I'm not saying it's a good thing to go try it, because no, it's not no. a good thing. It's exceedingly addictive. Yeah. But it takes about six weeks of extreme use before you get addicted. Right, and you know the thing that... Uh, but that, that, that wasn't the story they told everybody. What they told everybody is don't do it because the first time you do it, you'll be hooked. Yeah. And so and therefore... I think there are... Yeah. There are a lot of people for which that would be a true case um, because some people just have that kind of personality. Matthew Perry, believe it or not, his book um, was, what was it? Something Lies and the Big Lie. Something yeah. the Big Lie. Yeah. It was it it explained addiction and the appeal of addiction better than I've ever um, seen it explained in print or explained yeah. anywhere. Yeah. And I think some people from that first time when they've never felt normal before, and you take a substance, and all of a sudden it's like this is how everybody else must feel. Well, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you why why heroin was bad. Okay, this. This is why you got addicted to it. What it did was it robbed you, it, it replaced your endorphins, which is mm -hmm. the chemical in your body. That for instance, if you fall and you hurt your knee, you don't feel it immediately because all the endorphins run to that. The reason a lot of people are runners is to get an uh -huh. endorphin high, okay, mm -hmm. which is much like a heroin high. Yeah. All right? So that's why they're addicted to running. The fact is that this this uh, whole thing about endorphins is is that heroin replaced the endorphins in your body. So your body now says, I don't need to produce the endorphins anymore because I'm getting this. Yes. And then when you try to quit the endorphins, you go well, through endorphin, re re uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Renewal system. Uh, I'm, I, God, I, I'm losing the use of the English language. Uh, endorphins 
speak Portuguese. What it does is it it doesn't replace it, it. You have to replace it with something, but the only thing that will replace it is the heroin because your body shuts down making endorphins and takes right. it a year before it really starts producing them again. And that's the real danger in heroin and why it's so addictive. Yeah, because you just have to keep using it. Well, I think pe most people that have used heroin to any degree know that feeling of withdrawal, and it's left unabated, uh, like a two, three day withdrawal that goes into a detox is pretty brutal. Well, that whole idea that you, you use it, oh, you just use it once and you're hooked, is really what yeah. caused pr more problems than anything else, because that is not true. And you know, one thing I, that I, one reason I believe that heroin's been demonized in this country, it's not an indigenous crop. We don't have the makings of heroin here. We don't grow them. Well, and yeah, so, that too. But you know, I mean, uh, uh, I just felt that they should legalize heroin, basically because you want to take you would be taking the money out of it. You'd be taking you you want to ruin. You know, when they say, "Oh, we're going to stop drugs coming in from South America," well, how can we do that? I don't know. How do we do that? Well, let's lock up the border. Let's not let them in. Uh, let's arrest everybody who... No, the answer to it is if you really want to cut the uh, heroin dealers and the uh, f uh, fentanyl dealers and all of that in South America, you want to cut their legs, you just legalize this stuff. Yeah, and I don't know why our government is so short-sighted. I mean, that seems like it's obvious. And then if people have a problem... They won't be feel afraid to deal with it on a medical level. Right. You know, yeah. they'll go to doctors, they'll go to programs to get off of it and so on, but they, they'll know that they won't be arrested or shunned by the society or whatever. Exactly. You know, so deal with it more openly. They do in England, you know. Yeah, and you know what is, they just register and you're fine, but you know what's interesting, the rise of ketamine as a legitimate uh, psychological tool being used by psychiatrists. Yeah. Because I think ketamine was a big club drug in the 90s in San Francisco. I mean, I've used ketamine, and but I had done it with ecstasy, and it was almost immobilizing. The impact was so um, tranquilizing. <laughs> but yeah. ketamine yeah. Is, now, is now legit. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that by illegalizing drugs, you make them more dangerous. That's my whole. They, that's it in a nutshell. Okay. Yeah, you make them part of the demi monde, which is like the dark side. And people are going to go to 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 illicit sources to get it, whereas if the government were making heroin to supply to the people, mm -hmm. or companies were allowed to make it to supply to people. Uh, that we wouldn't be having the deaths from it that we have because nobody would be cutting it with the uh, fentanyl. Excellent. Nobody would be, uh, you would get a measured dose instead of uh, not knowing exactly what you were getting. I mean, and, and that something was made in a bathtub rather than in a chemical laboratory under cleanly, 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 uh, cl under clean <laughs> circumstances. Yeah, it would be. I think that would be a lovely thing. And the prescription for it, maybe it'll make it over the counter. Yeah. Um, but we always, you know, that's why the tagline for anything you see, whether it's Ozempic or any drug advertised, is like, um, you know, check with your physician. Right. And I'm sure that's because of the physician's lobby. We didn't have to, you know, the reason we go to doctors, they have the script pads. That's why we go to doctors, um, not because they went to med school, you know, not because of anything. They have mm. the script. And the only thing horrible about drugs is that there's an ad on TV that I see over and over again that is just horrible. The fat girl singing about a, 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 like a, yeah. a, a, a diabetic uh, drug. Yeah. Yeah. Her. I her. That. You don't like that one? You know, I, I got to tell you, if you'd lose about 100 pounds, you wouldn't have a diabetic problem. <laughs> well, when she, but in the end, when she puts on like yellow dress. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. yeah. Oh, this dress makes <laughs> is, has a thinning, slimming approach. Right. Instead of the <laughs> jeans that I was wearing where I look like, uh, you know. 
<laughs> like a reverse hourglass. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only drug they should make illegal is what I'm taking every night, pregabalin, because sometimes when I can't remember things, it's because of the pregabalin. That's yeah, that sounds the, like a Jerry Lewis word. That's one of the side effects. I don't sing that out of it, do I? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, and I've known you forever, so I think I would detect yeah. when you are. Hey, listen, let me but, look. But Ooh, that, you know, we've, we're have we almost running out of time here. Well, you know, maybe you and I could run for president and beep on that platform alone. Legalize everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything. And you want to vote for an old guy? Try me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm older Biden's than got- Biden. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, man, oh, in Iowa, even though it was an odd decision, I am so glad I made that decision to move to Des Moines and cover the ramp up to Trump's first campaign. Mm-hmm. It was interesting because I'd always wanted to well, do that. I, I, well, we, when I was at Sirius XM, we went to the Iowa caucuses, and it's a fascinating thing. It is fascinating. It, and the it's last- a totally ineffective, doesn't mean a thing. Because, you know, the winners of the last couple of, uh, but before Trump, the last winners of the last uh, Iowa caucuses, well, even when he was running, were uh, Huckabee mm-hmm. and what's his name down in Texas? Um, you know, Cruz. The Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they the, won yeah, I, Iowa. Okay. Just remember and, that. They won Iowa. Well, that's why I wanted to move to Iowa. First of all, it seemed like an odd place to kick off the whole presidential selection process. And the thing I noticed about Iowa, first of all, too damn cold. People are clicky. Um, and there's a the stoicism is owing to the cold temperatures. I mean, small talk, you're not gonna make small talk if it's 10 degrees below zero, you know, hi, Bob, how you been? How's the wife? No, you wanna get back inside as fast as you can. Yeah, right. And so, hey, Bob, I'm freezing my ass off here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you too, Bob? Yeah. Let's bamboo. Anyway, we, we've run out of time, as always. And I hate well, running out of time with you because we could go on for an hour. Well, we did do an hour, today, but it, it, <laughs> in two, two parts. So. It is delightful. Uh, I so. hope I will see you again next week. Absolutely. Ladies and Absolutely. gentlemen, that there <laughs> is Lori Thompson. Thanks, Lori. I'll see you, darling. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there she was, the lovely and attractive uh, Lori Thompson. Boy, do I do I like that lady. Uh, you know, uh, she, uh, she's been a friend of mine for a long time. That's for damn sure. Probably longer than most people, most, more than most wives I've had, I think. You know, I mean, I, I know one of my ex-wives, but I never talked to her. So, I, you know, not that we have any animosity towards each other, just nothing to talk about. So, anyway. Oh. Mm. There we go. Mm. Coffee. It'll get me through the next hour. I hope. I hope. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's another week. It's another dollar. It's another uh, 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 ramble. Uh, why we do this, I have no idea. I, uh, I just keep doing it because I guess it keeps me active. I think that's probably what the word is for it. we got a bunch of people here who want to come in here and join the uh, citizen panel. And here they come. Oh, look, we got somebody who doesn't call all that often, but when he does, it's always a joy. Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, Tom. Hello. Yeah, hi. And, of course, there's Charlie Wallace. He's connecting his audio right now. Uh, He's connected to his audio now. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Alex. And hi to Brian Neary, who just joined us as well. Hello, Brian. Hi, Alex. Yes. What's? Uh, did you have a good weekend of sports? It could. It could be better this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I was going to say really quick. Uh, I, I when I used to party in San Francisco, I did a lot of uh, ecstasy and ketamine. Ketamine. It was a lot of fun. Ecstasy. Ecstasy. The only. The only problem with that is 
when your friends are tired and want to go to the car and they don't have water, you got to take care of your friends. That's the only things that happen bad with ketam- with the uh, ecstasy are these kids would be dying because they're in their car alone because their friends left them, you know, and, and they need water because. I don't know of anybody who died or or had had anything terrible happen because of ecstasy. Uh, Right. I was told... Everybody would blame ecstasy, but really it's not ecstasy. It's just the kids that are drained from from all the water and everything in their body, and their friends aren't taking care of them and giving them water. Yeah, yeah. So you were... How did that come up that you all of a sudden were big on drugs back then? Uh, my friend gave me ecstasy in Mexico. <laughs> it's like he was my best friend after that for a while. Well, wait a minute, so. but how did that how did that come up? I mean, what? In other words, why did you just bring that up? Did I say? Well, because something? you're talking to Lori about it. What was I talking to her about? It was recorded a week about ago. Ecstasy. Yeah. About my ecstasy. ecstasy and oh, ketamine. Yeah. She says she used to take ketamine. I used to take ketamine. I, I don't know about ketamine because I never tried it. But all I know is that I I asked a doctor once about ecstasy. And he didn't seem too terribly against it. You know, yeah. he said it's pretty benign drug in in most cases. I know I'll probably get demonetized by, uh, you know, YouTube who doesn't know better. But I've been told by people who know about drugs and about the uh, how terrible some drugs are and how good some drugs are. And, and they said that, that one was, you know, was not it was highly overrated as being dangerous. Exactly. You know, I did it. All I did was suddenly realize how good the rug felt. Mm-hmm. You know, you touch things. You, you're always touchy feely about stuff. You know, and that's oh, about yeah. it. You know, like, uh, you know, YouTube. I made a lot of I made a lot of friends on ecstasy. By people who <laughs> I'll bet you did about drugs and about the uh, how terrible some drugs are and how good some drugs are. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. Hey, Zeph, here you go. <laughs> anyway. Pretty <You're a> genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so no, I really, uh, I really, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I did it uh, way back when. I had a girlfriend who liked it, and uh, she liked to have sex on it. And who mm-hmm. am I to argue, okay? And I didn't know what to expect out of it. And after I did it, I went, that's pretty nice, you know. With not... ecstasy? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. called the love drug on the street. Yeah. No, that's everybody what it gets is. warm and... I've never done it, but everybody gets warm and fuzzy. Now, supposedly not addictive. You know, I'm not suggesting anybody do it here, but I'm just trying... I think we should also tell the truth about drugs because the problem is, is that I think the biggest problem we've had over the years are the lies about certain drugs. Uh, I use as an example heroin in which they always used to tell you, don't do heroin, you do it once and you're hooked. Well, no, that's a lie. That's an absolute (laughs) out and out lie. It takes about six weeks of abuse to get addicted to it. Oh, you might find you really like it and that's your, you know, but so far as uh, suddenly getting addicted from the first time you do it by doing it once. Um, And the problem with that was is that people would uh, do it, and once they did it once, they figured, well, I guess I'm hooked, according to the experts, and they just kept doing it, and they got up to that six-week area, and they were they were definitely, yeah. you know, addicted to it. So, I mean, it's a horrible, pathetic drug. I, I don't want to even minimize it, folks. Don't let me even think I'm minimizing it. But it's not the same, it's not as dangerous as alcohol. That's the funny part about it. Yeah, alcohol yeah, yeah. is God. I mean, how many lives have been ruined by alcohol? Yeah. You know, how many lives have been ruined by heroin? By heroin? <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, I don't think somebody's driving on heroin. No, <laughs> I don't think no, they're well, they, getting behind they, a car and killing an innocent person. Heroin is cheap, and it's a narcotic. It makes you drowsy, and people nod off on it. We, and now they're now they're moving into fentanyl. Yeah, yeah that, fentanyl. But, fentanyl. Hey, Alex, Alex, like you said though, exactly like you said. When I used to party and party party, man, I, I would be afraid to do E or anything right now because of these things. Yeah, oh, they used no, to put a lot of caffeine and ecstasy. They used to cut it with caffeine because I would keep you up. You know, I'm so, going to tell people do not but, do any drug today that you're getting off the street. 
okay? Right. Because it's, it, it's probably laced with fentanyl or there's a damn good chance that it is. And that's what makes it dangerous. There's heroin that's got fentanyl in it, okay? Yep. The fentanyl is killing them, not the heroin, okay? Right. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, don't get ecstasy. Got to be right. cut with, with fentanyl. Uh, anything you get illicitly, don't trust anymore. It's just and not worth it. Right, and the reason why they cut, they put a little caffeine and ecstasy to keep you up. Same thing with fentanyl. They're going to just a little bit just to give you that, like you said earlier, that little extra spark, you know, and then people like that pill and they they want more of those pills. But, yeah, they well, put the, too the, much the, in there or something and you're going to die. It's this stupid. Is, this is why I've argued for years that we have to have a legality of everything. Uh and, and the reason for that is, is that it's more dangerous keeping these things illegal than if you legalize them and then you can control them. The government can then, you know, sell you your heroin and make sure it's a proper dose and it isn't laced with fentanyl. Uh, it, we're they killing... did it with pot. What? They did it with pot. I mean, it, as much as they could. I mean, when they first came out with the edibles, you didn't know how much to take of edibles. No, nope. and now at least you know that you break off this much, and it's five milligrams or whatever. Yeah. Before right. Right. it was a candy is, bar, is that and being you bite a little the, piece off, yeah. and you get all fucked up. Is that being controlled by the government, though? You know, it is. Ones. Yeah, now it is. In a way, it, I think it, it's regulated. Yeah, yeah. Because I know that at one point in the beginning, the. Uh, you know, the chocolate bars and stuff like that were pretty wide open. They were just chocolate bars in here. Just take a bite. Oh, you know what happened? I told you what happened. pretty ripped. I told you what happened to Marjorie, didn't I? Yeah. Somebody yeah. came from California and brought her one of those candy bars. So yeah. she didn't know how much to take. She ate the whole thing. The whole thing. <laughs> right. And you got, you were screwed up for quite a while. She was stoned for about four days straight. Yeah, and it's like oh, taking man. acid oh, almost. That sounds like fun. Does it say now on the packages? Because I haven't bought any. In a, in a, uh, I don't know that it says so, but they they tell you. I know that, and they. I think it. I think it does say. You it know, says it on the Delta Eight. Five, yeah, five milligrams per square or something like that. You know what I miss though? Rolling a joint. Remember when they used to get you get pissed because they'd cut the coke with baby laxative. What you'd have hell? to take a good crap you get all pissed off what are you doing putting baby laxative in it yeah right I used to well, put baby you know what? I used people, to put people that snort drugs they get tired of the fiberglass and causing their nose to bleed well when I was doing a lot of coke I, I cut it with mannitol just so I wouldn't do as much you know really? uh, yeah. you know you, you would have been a good person to hang around in those days if you liked uh, cocaine because it sounds like you had tons of it. Uh, I had tons of it. Yeah, or a lot of it, maybe or, not. Or other people did. It's always you, friends. You know. yeah. yeah, but you were you always had uh, some available to you. It sounds like. I remember once this was at a punchline in San Francisco. This kid went into the back room where Robin Williams was, and he was there for about. 10, 15 minutes, and he comes out and starts telling his friends, guess what? Robin just did all my coke. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm be, I, I, at that point, I knew that if you're famous, you never pay for your drugs. Uh -huh. you yep. know? And I think yep. that was my problem a bit. That happened to Sam Kinison. He was always high. And it ended up killing him. No, it didn't end up killing him. What did? Drunk driver. The drugs in somebody else's body. Yeah, yeah, drunk driver. Drunk driver. Yeah. Drunk oh, driver. I, I heard he was high on drugs when no. he got me. Yeah. No, no. wrong high. again. Yeah. Wrong <laughs> again. Well, I can't always be right. Everybody <laughs> drink. Everybody drink. <laughs> yeah, he's the new Phil. <laughs> so it's a good thing Phil isn't here. <laughs> um, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Sam uh, was, was going on, on was today about uh, that we didn't need masks and nobody needed masks for COVID and it didn't do any good and they were worthless and. We didn't need to close the schools because the kids don't. Oh, I get thought it. all of that was horrible. I thought that was just yeah. terrible. I thought it was terrible what Trump did. <clears throat> yeah. In in in. Oh, hey, can we uh, can we use uh, Clorox? Uh, if we swallow yeah. that, won't it be good? <laughs> it right in the vein. Yeah. 
So, I, you know, I mean, I just think that uh, uh, we need a, a really positive attitude about drugs in this country, and the best way to solve the problem with it is to make everything legal, have most of it uh, uh, either pr produced by the government or regulated by the government so that people don't die from overdoses. Overdoses are gotten from not having the right amount, okay? Uh, and I think that less people would die from these drugs if we had a intelligent legalization of it, not you know any it's it, you know not like it is with pot where companies can now make you know in fact pot I got to tell you the terrible thing that's happened with pot is that it's now pretty much um, a corporate business, you know, and, and and I I saw that coming. I here in New York what they've done which is very good. They have given the licenses for dispensaries to, uh, to people who are the first people in line to get it are the people who had spent time in jail for marijuana. And they're giving them the dispensary <laughs> licenses. Uh, number one, because the dealers know how to do, do it, best of all. But secondly, they just wanted those people because now it's legal and they may have spent five, ten years, some people, in jail on drug charges like that. Give them some kind of advantage in life now. So, you know. What do you think about all of this, Tom Yamaguchi? <laughs> uh, I think uh, Frank Zappa had the best uh, anti-drug message. He said, uh, don't take speed, uh, kids. You'll turn into people that are just like your parents. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You know, that's true. That's true. So uh, the downside to heroin, it, yeah, I, I like your mm -hmm. idea of the government supplying it, Alex, but the downside to heroin is a lot of people, it's a cheap drug, it's it's made a resurgence again, and people are, that's how they're getting their fentanyl, and of course, it, but, but they shoot it up and they share needles, so it caused a lot of people to get AIDS by sharing well, needles. Well, that's why, that's why we started having, in some cities, needle-sharing programs. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And also, hepatitis C is big in the, in the, uh, in the, in the heroin field. But, uh, yeah, if we gave away needles, which has been shot down several times in California... Mm -hmm. I think um, we do. I, I think we do. They're doing it in New York, though. In I think city. we do it here in New York. Yeah. I think in the city yeah. they do it. Very there. smart. Yeah. Very smart to do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we have we had we have needle exchange here in California. Had it for decades. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. I, I thought so. Yeah. Most. Oh, yeah. most. Santa Cruz and Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. would you say, Kevin? I'm pretty sure they're doing it in San Francisco and Santa Cruz. Yeah, 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 but I don't think California allows it yeah. itself. No, no. Yeah. They, during during the AIDS during AIDS crisis is when they started doing needle exchange. Yeah, well, California. Yeah. Okay, hey, listen, we'd be real drunk tonight if we were playing the drinking game with uh, yeah. uh, with uh, Alan. You know. <laughs> um, well, I'm just not as much of a druggie as some of the people on this show. <laughs> Well, I, had, I I was a I was a drug user for many <clears throat> years. Not heroin. I never tried heroin. I just never wanted to take that risk. Okay, and quite frankly, I don't like drugs that put me to sleep. All yeah. right. The only thing I do, I'll tell you what I do now. Uh, what I'm saying is that what I what I miss most about pot is rolling a joint because everything's vaped now. You know, you go to a dispensary. You want some pot? Well, I guess they'll sell it to you, but you know you can just as easily get these little cartridges and you put them in your vape pen and you smoke pot that way. And I have one right by my bed. It's legal here in New York, folks. So if YouTube, you want to argue about it, it's legal here. I have a, a vape pen right next to my bed. I take a couple of hits off of it before I go to sleep. And between that and the pregabalin, I'm out like a light most of the night. And if I get up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep, another hit of it puts me right back to sleep. So, you know, I take it to put me to sleep, not to wake me up. I don't like doing pot, to be honest with you, because uh, it makes me drowsy and I become unsociable. Uh, in other Same words, there. huh? 
I just close, I just close up, you know, and, and I got tired of pot a long time ago. Marjorie never did, but I did. Yeah. Uh, but I use it to put me to sleep. I will say that. What Slayton used to say about pot being a good drug is he said, nobody ever hurt anybody. All they did was make a sandwich. <laughs> well, no, I said the two, the two horrible side effects of, of, uh, of marijuana were, uh, let me see, oh, obesity and pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, sex on weed is pretty good, too. Well, it's yeah, awesome. I, but... I know. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, uh, I... Uh, um, but anyway, I, uh, kids, don't do drugs. How about me saying that just to make uh, YouTube happy? <laughs> you know, because you're not allowed to tell the truth on YouTube. You're just allowed to tell what they think is the truth. And all right, just 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 for clarification here, yeah, uh, need law in California, according to H and S Health and Safety Code, section one one three six four. We don't have to get the number on the goddamn yeah, who thing. Cares? This is what this is what he does when he stops somebody with a car. As code hey, Bill, Bill is just like that. He gets all technical, and I'm gonna send you stuff right now. And he starts sending. No, us stuff. I'm not sending you anything. <laughs> no, well, what were you saying? What you, about? You need a prescription for it. For the what for, for, for what the uh, now, needle? They have the needle. Yeah. So okay. oh. cities are overriding that, which is a good thing. Like San Francisco, <clears> saying you don't need a prescription. Just come and do. Well, well, you know what? They, what they, they don't want people to die as a result of using right. needles. So if every time right. or they, or they get use, AIDS or get hepatitis, well, also absolutely. Also, what the, what they were doing when they were druggies was they were sharing needles with each other because getting yeah. needles were almost impossible. So That's now right. that they're giving them out, you can see people hunting for a needle in the street in the gutter. Yeah, exactly. And and if the person had AIDS, for instance. That's AIDS right. is a blood transferred uh, uh, so disease. So is hepatitis C. And yep. so, so is hepatitis C. Um, you can get that. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I agree that needle exchange ought to be the the law of the land. You know. Well, it it's just be... you know, it, it, the I... idea is that we have to solve. We we decide we're going to solve a problem, and then we have no idea of how to solve it. You know, and uh, I I've often found that the 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 answers they come up with to pressing problems is ridiculous. It's, you know, it doesn't make much sense. So, you know. So you said something else on with Lori. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know. You said Marjorie is, you were talking about back pain and back surgery. Mm -hmm. You said Marjorie's 80. She doesn't look a day over 65. <laughs> say, I didn't know did she I I say, didn't Did like, I say she was 80? As I say, I did that interview a week ago. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she is eighty. Yeah, <laughs> she, is 80. Yes. she doesn't. She doesn't look a day over sixty-five. She's so young looking, vibrant. Yeah. You don't wake up next to her in the morning, <laughs> uh, right? I, I'm sorry, I dear. If you listen to this, I, you know I'm joking. This, this is this is the night the fry pan hits Alex in the head. <laughs> You won't need the pot to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah, I don't endorse any of this, Marjorie. Yeah, no, I was. I How was, comfortable is the couch trying to get into the bedroom when the door's locked? Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, no, anyhow. but you know, she, I, she. I don't think she. I didn't realize she was that old. I'm sorry. 80, I, yeah, she just turned eighty. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I thought she was in her early to mid sixties. So. Yeah. Well, you know she something. Goes, I, I got to tell you though, it, it, <laughs> she feels old. Uh, and I feel old, you know. I mean, she uh, she has uh, so many problems with her back, yeah. and so on. That you know, it it takes its toll. You know, you get get pretty, uh, 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 you know, feel she you get slower. Okay, that's oh, absolutely. But well, uh, that you know, helps with the back pain. Well, it does help to a certain extent, but the uh, uh, what what she's taking one of these heavy duty drugs. Okay. That, uh, but she only takes it when she really is in pain. She's very good about it, you know. Um, and and by the way, doctors today don't just prescribe pain medication. Nope. Uh, you have to go uh, come see them every now and then. And you got to get toenails and pulled without anesthetic to get drugs <laughs> around here like that. 
Well, no, I'm yeah. saying that, that that they they are very careful to make sure she doesn't get addicted. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. you know, like, as long why as, does it as matter? Uh, uh, the truth of the matter is, as long as I, I had a friend once who was uh, had been a heroin addict, and then uh, quit. You know, managed to get out of being a heroin addict, and uh, got into a terrible automobile accident. They were hauling him off to the uh, to the to the hospital. And they wanted to give him some morphine. He said, no morphine. He said, I'm a heroin addict, and I've been off the stuff, and, you know, whatever. And the doctor said, no, take it, because you're not going to get high. Because if you have pain, extreme pain, and we give you morphine, the morphine is going to obliterate the pain not to get you high. It only gets you high when you're taking it and there's nothing else wrong with you. Yeah. You know. So um, uh, it, you know, that, that that's a very important factor to remember with stuff, you know, like that. So anyway, what am I talking about drugs for? I I, I don't know, boy. That that was a funny show watching it between you and Lori. You talked about every drug, how to yeah. do it, all kinds of we stuff. We didn't about talk it. about how to do I it. Was taking notes, I'm telling you. I was too. <laughs> what do you mean we were talking about how to do it? You, 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 and Lori were talking about it a little bit, yeah. but yeah, Jar- Charlie was taking notes. So was I. What are you trying to get me that, thrown off of was, YouTube altogether? No, that was that was good stuff. No, Charlie I mean, just, said the Charlie said notes first. So well, we were basically was that were we not uh, Charlie telling the truth? Yeah, you know yeah. we weren't. Tr- you know, and I I object to the lies about drugs, as I say, because I think it's contributed more to addiction in this country. Than any other single factor. Look at Brian. Yeah, yeah. Did more damage than anything else because anybody that ever tried pot knew that it wasn't this horrible drug that was going to make you go crazy. That's right. You got to move up to fentanyl, and that way you end up voting Republican. Well, years ago, I was working with an organization called Normal, which mm-hmm. was the marijuana legalization group. Yeah. And uh, we came across a movie that had not been seen in years. And it was called, um, um, what do you call it? Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness. And we decided to start showing that at midnight showings and charging for it and making money for normal, showing that movie. And uh, it was an amazing film. I mean, it was just so Hilarious. full of misinformation <laughs> that it was, you know, just amazing. You know, guy gets high. Oh, I'm on marijuana. I'm going to go crazy. And he jumps like off a acid. building. He jumps off a building. You know, uh, you know, if you're high on pot, you maybe can't get to the window. Yeah, <laughs> you right. I mean, no, you just yeah. sit there and say, "I ah, screw it." Uh, Tom, you look like you have something you want to say. No, I said, but I, yeah, I remember Reefer Madness. I saw it in the back in the '70s when I was living down in San Diego. It was a very, very, very popular film among us college kids. So. Yeah. Well, the, that, the funny. two things that used to make us laugh, okay, uh, was Reefer Madness. And then there was an episode of Dragnet. Do you remember this episode? Oh, I think Actually, I remember what you're talking about. Actually, there's a whole bunch of Dragnets. Yeah, but yeah. one in specific on marijuana, or was it LSD? Uh, it was it? LSD. It was, well, uh, that, uh, one, that one was uh, Dragnet 67 when they premiered it. <laughs> with Harry Morgan as, uh, yeah. as the... And, 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 you're worried and, about me and, coming yeah, up with codes. Yeah, it was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like the baby memory. drowned in the bathtub, you know? <laughs> like, and they called him Blue Boy or something because he painted a fa- his face blue. I know. You know. But, but I was listening to... Uh, I was with a friend. We were we were mm-hmm. driving, and, and uh, there was a serious radio in, in, in her rental car, and we were listening to Radio Classics, and they had an old Dragnet episode, a radio episode, I said. And it was it was about how all these teenagers were just going berserk, and they were destroying the movie theater, and they're doing. And it turned out that they were all high on pot. <laughs> yeah, well. So they, this they, is nothing. This was nothing new for Jack Webb. One, of the, one of the good movies with pot was Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> really. Yeah, you don't remember how it started out? They all climbed out of a van. That they, six of them were smoking, and the smoke oh, came pouring yeah. out of the van. And 
Well, you know, also passing around the most amount of misinformation was also Cheech and Chong. But it was <laughs> funny misinformation. That was funny, yeah. Up and Smoke. Oh, yeah, they had some oh, yeah. good movies. Yeah. I don't think they were trying to make a documentary. No, no I, I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> um, what year was that? Did that come out, Tom? You seem to know the years real well. <laughs> What which are you talking about? Uh, 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 Ch Cheech and Chong. Oh well, that was their big bamboo. Well, that, the right? that was yeah, the mid seventies. That was the seventies. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. when they had an album out called Big Bamboo? You mentioned yeah, they yeah. Had the big I have right It was here. it was a big what? Do you have, I have an paper? album? Right? I have all the Cheech and Chongs right but, here. But, but but if you have Big Bamboo, do you still have the giant rolling paper? Rolling paper. Rolling paper. Rolling paper. Whatever it came with, I have it. Yeah. You, you didn't. Uh, you didn't. Uh, I think you didn't I actually. Had a big joint. You didn't actually try and roll a joint with it. I <laughs> been, I imagine some people tried. We tried. Did it work? <laughs> yeah, we did. We did make one. Yeah, it was about a pound of weed. <laughs> but there was only one piece of paper in there, right? Yeah, it was about this. It was like an eight, <laughs> eight and a half by eleven. <laughs> It was like a legal sized piece of paper. Now, Charlie, why are you uh, why are you doing softball, and making extra money? You got all these collectibles. You ought to sell those on eBay. <laughs> I may try and do that. I tell you, I, I probably still have mine downstairs too. I kept a lot of my comedy records. I, I got rid of all my LPs except I kept all my comedy records. They're still in storage. Uh, and uh, I kept them because I figured that some of them would be worth something someday. Mainly because people didn't collect comedy albums like they collect. Well, and they're all coming back. If you go into a uh, store now, those those albums. I've been to a couple of consignment stores and whatnot. They're fifteen, twenty bucks a piece now. Yeah, they and sell. we used to get them for six ninety nine or whatever. Six, mine were like three ninety nine when I was buying. Yeah, yeah. three ninety nine yeah. mono, four ninety nine stereo. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or 99 cents with the Columbia Record Club. Yes. <laughs> you can and you get a well and you get a little you get a little stereo with it when you get the club. I got the steel stereo with steel speakers. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was pretty badass. That was the biggest ripoff of all time. Oh, wasn't you ain't it? kidding. All of a sudden you're getting all these records in the mail and go, what the hell is this? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and they keep showing up. They keep showing up. What did I sign up for? <laughs> You signed up for buying one every month for a year. Oh, it was ridiculous. And they were, and they were going to send you their selection unless you yeah, told you them. Uh, yeah. Unless you told and you them had you to send it, it back if you didn't want it. And you ended up with the carpenters and all kinds of crap. <laughs> hey, you don't like the carpenters. Eh? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, just ridiculous. Oh, uh, speaking of music, uh, Melanie died. Yes, she Oh, right. Didn't you? Uh, and didn't you know you something? She up? just brought herself a brand new pair of roller skates, too. Yeah. Was, <laughs> well, yeah. isn't she, Alex, that? isn't she one of your first interviews the, in New York? She hit a crack in the How did you know that? Because I think that's what you said once or several yeah. times or a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I had not thought about this was when I was at WMCA in New York. I had not thought about having, I used to have on politicians, I used to have on, you know, people who were, you know, um, in politics and so on. Uh, but then one day, um, somebody comes to me and says, uh, listen, I got a client, Melanie. Would you like to have her on your show? I said, mm -hmm. interview a rock person? He said, yeah. I said, why not? So she came on, and that was when the floodgates suddenly opened, and I started being the place for all musicians to didn't you interview Elton John? Yes. First interview he did in America. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just I just let all the record companies know that I was doing interviews and I wanted to do them with rock people. Mm -hmm. And they would all say to me, you want to use one of our musicians as an interview? And I went, yeah. And they started sending them to me. And I became the big outlet for these people to promote their records. Uh, and uh, so I started, the, and then everybody else started interviewing musicians, and then they're saying, oh, you know, we're really special. We're interviewing musicians. Yeah, I've been there, done that, you know. But it, it uh, you know, it was, um, she was the first. She was the one that, I think oh. a guy by the name of Bogart, I'm trying to remember his first name, 
who was the head okay. of Buddha Records or that company that had Buddha, uh, the label that she was on, he came to me and just said, would you, would you, could you have her on? And I went, fine. And I had her on. She wasn't a great interview, but she was fine. But then I said, well, anybody got any more? And before I knew it, I was up to my ass in musicians. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the best one ever, um, and a person who probably should have stayed off drugs, uh, was Iggy Pop. Uh, mm -hmm. They said, do you want Iggy Pop on your show? I said, of course, I'd like to have Iggy Pop on my show. He's, you know, he's great, you know, cultural icon. So he comes into my studio and he sits down and I start interviewing him. And every answer out of his mouth is a grunt. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. So do you enjoy music? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> um, how do you like New York? Uh -huh. He just grunted everything. <laughs> and this is going on, I swear to you, for 45 minutes. Oh my God. And finally I said to him, Iggy, can you do anything else but grunt? And he, <clears throat> and he belched. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, thank you very much, Iggy. Come back and see us anytime. But Did I mean, you have a shirt it, on? Huh? Did you have a shirt on? He had a shirt on, yeah. yeah. But the thing <laughs> was, the thing was that, that, uh, what was great about the interview was because all he was doing was grunting, it became hilarious. You know, it was just really funny. And then he got up and left, and that's the last, I think it was the last time I ever inter interviewed Iggy Pop. You know, he's still alive, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he is alive. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I have to keep up on all of this because everybody else I know is dying, you know. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, they, so, so then I just started being known for the guy who had, you know, music people as interviews. Nobody ever thought of doing it because the record companies never thought that the musicians had anything to say. And it was mm -hmm. surprising how much they did have to say. If you just asked them the questions, you know, so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. My granddaughter is collecting records now. Collecting records? Yeah, used records, you know, old stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's probably never heard of them. Yeah. Like from the 70s? Yeah. Yeah. They, people, I kept saying to people, people uh, kept saying to me, you know, LPs are better, you know, than uh, CDs because the uh, dynamics of the audio are better and more, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And I'm going, well, that's fine. But I'm, at this point, I said, I'm 40. And I've lo lose, lost a lot of my hearing, and I can't tell the difference. So give me yeah. the CDs. They're easier to keep around the house. Yeah. Because I remember with with albums, you pick up 10 of these damn things, you get a hernia. <laughs> they were trying to move them from Arizona to Texas. Oh, and then when I, <laughs> I, I went into uh, laser discs, that was even worse, because that was two LP-sized discs glued together so they could be uh, double-sized. I have a Pioneer laser disc player. Really? So do I. All right. Yeah, you open it, it opens from the top, and you put the... I bought it used, and the, the, the laser disc that came with it was... Well, that was the, the early one. ones. Later on, they came out with the ones where you could actually slide the disc in. Like oh, no, CD. this was an early yeah. one. It opened the top, but the laser disc that came with it, you know, I bought it at a garage sale, was uh, Midnight Express. Really? What, a, what a great movie. I mean, I... Talk about drugs. Well, I love yeah, it. Talk I, about uh, drugs. The re yeah. I, a reason I was committed to a laser disc, and I had something like a hundred laser discs, was because wow. I love the quality of the picture on my oh, television yeah. screen. Good quality. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine what it would look like on a on a digital TV now. Oh yeah, probably be great. DVDs, DVDs uh, came along, and uh, they uh, then I stopped doing the uh, the because they were smaller. You know, right. and yep. the quality was just as good, if not better. Yep. So, you know, my, how we've come a long way in my lifetime. <laughs> when I was a kid, we didn't have TV for crying out loud. <clears throat> we got our first TV set. I can't remember what year. And uh, it came and they had to put up a 20 foot antenna on top of our house because we lived in Marin County and the signal was too far away. Yeah, the hills. Yeah, 
And I, but I remember one time there was like uh, something a drop in the layer of atmosphere or whatever, and I sat there. I was watching a TV station out of Kansas City mm-hmm. through my big twenty foot antenna. Right? Huh? Probably at night. Yeah, yeah. It's probably at night, right? It well, was a test pattern. What I used to do when I was first starting out in radio is I would take my car, I'd go to the top of Mount Tamil Pius, which is a fairly large mountain in the Bay Area, and I would go up there and I would then sit there with my uh, car radio, what we call <laughs> DXing, and yep. check, uh, trying to find all these stations. Sometimes you go between two stations and you find a, and these, these signals, were, we're trying to see how far you could get them for how, uh, from how far away. And it's amazing at night that sky wave. Some of these things just mm-hmm. travel. Is it called skip at yep. night? Yep. Well, that's what the, the was radio it called operators. skip? Or we we called it. We called it skip in the radio and like ham radios and I and, yeah. and yeah. CB radio when I did CB back then. Yeah, we'd we call, add a few. We'd add a few watts to the radio and we, you know your call, maximum was five watts and we'd put about three thousand watts and right. go up to the top of a hill and burn down antennas all the yeah. way across the country and, and then stuff. you wonder why you couldn't get your car started again yeah exactly <laughs> yeah got some linear in the trunk i remember those days yeah but you know i started out in the days when uh, when there was no television you know and when we got our first television set i was thrilled but i had to wait till 4 30 in the afternoon when the first television station went on yeah yeah mm-hmm. and then at midnight they'd go off with the at midnight they would the sign anthem off. The anthem, yeah, the and then the right. bird jets or whatever flying off in the that's system. right, and the flag would fly, and then and then go. they wouldn't sign back on till four thirty in the afternoon Next again. Time. Yeah, afternoon. Yeah. Finally, but things you were at school all day anyway, so you couldn't watch TV. Yeah, you're right. And leave it. The Beaver was on at three. Yeah, the, the first show I think that was on at four thirty, at least in California, was Howdy Doody. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. That's right. Satellite and all those. Yeah. I remember the first time I ever saw TV. What happened was, I was living in in uh, San Francisco, living on Telegraph Hill. At the bottom of Telegraph Hill is a big uh, park, and lining the park on one side was a place called Fagoni and Riley. How do I remember that name? <laughs> I can't remember my wife's name these days, and somehow I can remember Fagoni and Riley. And they had a, a television set they put in the window. Ooh. And everybody in the neighborhood would get, gather uh, around that really window yeah. and watch Milton Berle with the Texaco oh, Star boy. Theater. This was the first time I had ever seen TV. And uh, now that I, I, you know, I can do that, and I have a, two cameras sitting over here that are this big, you know? Yeah. And I can turn out pictures that are better than they ever could, you know. But boy, you probably I, told all your friends that's ah, a fad; it'll never go. Well, anywhere. I thought that I'd gone from that point in my life to this point. A lot's happened, you know. And and I think isn't it, uh, Charlie? Isn't there a rule about technology that it's exponential, that it doubles itself every ten years or something? Yeah, supposedly that's yeah. what they say. Yeah. Because look at where we are now, you know, and well, look, but look at what we're doing with it. We're yeah. completely screwing up. Yeah, you know what they're doing with it now. They they have a picture of uh, Andy Reid, the coach of the Chiefs, kissing uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this what we're using this stuff for now? It looks like it looks perfect. It looks, you know, yeah. the, well, we use technology for all the wrong stuff. You heard the latest about Joe Biden, haven't you? That uh, in uh, oh. in uh, New Hampshire, uh, hmm. they were doing robocalls with Biden saying, "Don't go out and vote." Yeah, with fake calls. <clears throat> of course, it wasn't him. No, but you know, and that's what we've come to. You know. Yeah, I, 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 I it's not going to be good. No, it's not going to be. Good. You're gonna. You're, I mean, they they show clips on Facebook and Instagram of people talking about something, and you can't tell if it's a small delay, and they're not saying the right the words in the right you know uh, synced up, or if they're not saying what they're saying, and they're advertising for stuff, yeah. and it's uh, yeah, I well, think it's, it's gotten much better where you can't tell. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's yeah. unbelievable how. 
how how good that stuff is coming well, out. Well, you know, I have a good question. I was thinking to myself, I'm starting to get into a Trump mentality, if you can excuse me, Charlie. I don't mean to get into a Trump mentality. But I was beginning to say, what's to guarantee that we had a really proper election in New Hampshire? And that it wasn't... How about in the country? Huh? How about in the rest of the country? Well, we aren't voting in the rest of the country yet. We will. You know. But what's to say that, you know, Trump hasn't got it all figured out and he isn't like... Uh, He's stealing the election. Yeah. Stealing yeah. the election. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the funny thing is it could happen. Well, you know, I mean... Uh, <laughs> Far be it from me to be a fan of Nikki Haley's, but God, I was rooting for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, ha she hasn't left yet. Hmm? She's staying in. Yeah. She's staying in, but, you know, I mean, I I can't believe these Republicans. I mean, what's, what's going through their mind? Are they are they crazy? Going right back, I mean, going right this, back to them. It's like, it's ridiculous. Have you been ridiculous. watching this guy, Trump, speak? Yeah. I, like, I like the other day how he <laughs> talked about sending in the National Guard to stop, uh, you know, uh, uh, the vice president from signing the documents. And he got Nikki Haley confused with uh, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. And you know what the Republicans are now saying? He did that to test the Democrats. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah. It was all over Newsmax, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, he, it was uh, the uh, Newsmax. Well, the, same the N is the same, and the Y at the end is like, like an I. It sounds like I. So I think you, yeah, he was testing. You know, he, he was testing you to see if you'd catch that. Shit. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't. Here's what I don't believe. You know, you get to a place like Iowa, and there's a big evangelical backing there. And that you have to get if you're going to win, and yeah, they were for I, and they were I for Trump. 40. Are they out of their? Where did they learn their religion from? He gave them three Supreme Court justices. That's that, the way they. Yeah, yeah. but he. Yeah. Also, I mean, they they you know, he's their tool. Simple as that. Yeah, God, they're using him hmm. like he's using them. Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Hey there. There she is. I hear you did really good in your dance thing the other day. Oh, Adrian. Oh, oh, you embarrassed her. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I, I, congratulations. <laughs> she got a hair stuck in the door. <laughs> hair <is> stuck in <laughs> the door. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> anyway, she, she comes in, doesn't she, just to get on camera quickly and then yep. yeah yeah she want yeah yeah she she's play, she plays hard to get that's what she does oh is she gonna break some hearts oh my god well we're the phil and i are taking brian and another friend out to the range to teach him how to handle guns <laughs> at the end, at the end of this month or next day. month wait a minute he's gonna, wait, he's gonna need it brian Yes. Why do you need to learn how to use a gun? <laughs> because Uncle Phil and Uncle Alan said said so. <laughs> really? They, no. They, they have it. They have this report. Iowa school have armed staff members, including teachers. <clears throat> really? Yeah. What kind of world are we living in? <laughs> That's Iowa for you. Is this what you I thought teachers went to teach, not to yeah. have a gun on them. I Tom, Tom is this what you signed up for? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, other kind of countries just don't have problems like that. I don't right. know it's what it is, but <clears throat> you know, they could. But, uh, They're starting yeah. to get a few shootings over in those other countries, but not like here. Oh, no, no nothing, nothing like it, like here. Every, like it. every week you can say, well, what's the one for this week? You know. Yeah. It depends well, on which Walmart has ammo on sale. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just gotten too ridiculous. And I guess, is there a reason why you're going to go learn how to shoot a gun, Brian? 
No, they're just saying to scare off the boyfriends. Yeah, and the boy starts sniffing around Adrian, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm just using the whole, you know, if I go to prison for 25 years, you know, I'm going to be already 70, so what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about something else that's a little more fun, a little nicer, uh, last night, I, I don't know how I got to it, but I, I suddenly heard about this movie. And it won the Academy Award for the Best Foreign Picture in 1990. Okay. Uh, and I had never seen it. And I'd heard about it, but I'd never seen it. So I decided I'll watch it. I found it online. It's on Paramount Plus. And it's um, uh, Cinema Paradiso. Has anybody ever seen this film? I've mm. seen it. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Absolutely. Okay. If you get a chance, watch it. It's 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 hard to it's three hours long, and it's about a a, a kid who gets entranced by this movie theater, a little <laughs> child, and then gets to know the projectionist. And it, the whole thing is a romance of of uh, in the beginning of movies, and then there's this romance this kid has with this woman, and then the last part of it is the man having grown up and never gone back home because of the problem of never being able to see this girl again. And uh, it just three hours of, it, to begin with, I don't know if you know who Ennio Morricone is, but he does a lot of, the, he did the music for the, uh, uh, for the awesome. Leone films, you know. Yeah, the man with no name movie. This man, I told Marjorie, this man could take a, a, a movie of me taking a pee and put music to it and make you cry. You know, I mean, uh, the, he did the music for this picture, and it's just, I'm telling you, wonderful film. Just a wonderful film. Uh, I, I was weeping at the end, okay? Mm -hmm. That's me. I, I, I'm a sucker for movie music that makes me cry. Mm -hmm. You know, I once asked Marvin Hamlish, I said, why is it that I watched The Way We Were, which he composed the music for, Alan and Marilyn Bergman did the lyrics, and I said, why is it there was nothing for me to cry about? What, it's the Plaza Hotel for crying out loud, and I'm crying like a schoolgirl. And he said, oh, there's a certain minor chord you can hit and everybody will cry. Yeah. Yeah. So there were these guys like Morricone who knew how to write this music that just was so grabbed you, you know, and just manipulated you in a good way. Uh, that and so I watched this movie and I, I after I was finished watching it, I said, you know, this is what movies are about. This thing affected me. I watched it. I was affected by it, and they just don't make them like that anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like Barbie. I like Barbie, but it's no. <laughs> You know, Cinema Paradiso, okay? You know? Uh, so, anyway. Maybe that's why I got stubbed by the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll tell you why I got snubbed by the, by the Oscars. Is that the people who vote there for the nominations are, uh, are professionals in the business. Usually in each of the categories, if it's, you know... Mm -hmm best actor then it's actors who vote mm -hmm. for the nominees on that category and so on but what happens is you get a picture that's that popular made like 1.7 billion dollars worldwide dollars. right <laughs> they get an attitude about it they don't need an award they got what they should what they, they should the have. yeah they got the money you know and quite frankly i you know they didn't uh, they didn't give what's her name uh the uh the director, the director. She should have gotten a, an Oscar nomination. Absolutely an amazing original way to do that picture. Okay? Not what you expected out of it. And I thought that was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and yet, um, Greta Gerwig, uh, she didn't get nominated. Why? You know, that was a masterstroke of taking something that could have been a piece of crap and turning it into a really almost political movie. And, and made the whole point of the movie the way they treated her at the Oscars. And yet, you know what happens is, yeah, exactly. The Ryan it. Gosling got a nomination, <laughs> but Fargo uh, yeah. did not. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, 
it, certainly Greta Gerwig should have been nominated. Yeah. She'd been nominated for Best Screenplay, you know, she and uh, her husband. Uh, so, I mean, it, it just, uh, um, well, you know, we all know the Oscars are, there's always somebody that gets left out big time. And yet, you know, the, the, what the is Scorsese Indian movie got nominated. It wasn't that good a film, you know, as Scorsese films go, you know. Uh, I suppose his next picture is going to be called Indian Casino, you know, <laughs> but uh, he, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't that, it was okay. It wasn't Nobody great. got slapped this year. <laughs> they haven't had the awards yet. No, oh, yeah. oh, that's why I don't follow it. They just announced the nominations. Oh. They just announced it. On, well, if you okay, so there's still time to slap somebody. Oh, else. yeah, there's still <laughs> good slapping time available at, at this year's Oscars. I think it'd be funny if, uh, you know, Margot Robbie goes up and uh, slaps uh, uh, the guy who played Oppenheimer. That would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> You know, I, that, I hear the music. What? I hear the music. What music? I don't know. I don't hear music. About, about now, you usually say you can't hear the music. Well, no, because I haven't, uh, I I haven't started them. playing uh, it yet, though. Still got another two minutes to go here before I okay. do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anybody do anything really interesting over the weekend at all? Besides waste your life watching football? Hey, I'm going to the football drugs. game. I'm huh? going. You're going? Which one are really? you going to? Oh, he's going to the 49ers game. Well, I said on the Monday show, but yeah, Adrian won a scholarship for the for Nationals. Yes. That's great. That's yeah, a great. big party. Yeah, it was outstanding. She really has gotten tall, when is hasn't it? she? When is it, Brian? Uh, Fourth of July week. Oh, okay. And she's really gotten tall too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they sent a couple of videos, and they have the the real cut. You know, that the people who run the show they have a really professional video set. So, of of her one of her lyrical songs, the one's like a tearjerker, and uh, yeah, she's she's really good. She get a trophy or a prize or what? A uh, piece of paper. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah, they got they got a couple seconds and a third. Um, Good old scholarship they, they get, says you get to spend more money is what it is. Yeah, yeah scholarship. Yeah, they 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 pay for the the you know getting getting there, but then still got to pay for transportation, airfare, hotel. Yeah, all yeah. that stuff. But mm -hmm. that's always nice. Yeah, yeah. Here, come so, on down. Then, you know, like <laughs> like last year, the whole team did the nationals. You know, all went as a group, but not this year. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, well, that's really good. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad for her because, uh, and, and glad for you because you're a proud papa. You know. Yeah, uh, I could be spending this money on another car. I keep reminding her. <laughs> <laughs> that's anyway. why I always took some and put it over here. <laughs> yeah, there's not much of some to go over there right now. <laughs> Stick it underneath the mattress and what? What money? What money? Oh, yeah, you can go. Sure, no problem. Hey, you Tom, can go to that. You can go to that meet. Yeah, no problem. Tom Yamaguchi, thanks for being here tonight. Yeah. Do next it. time you see Lori Thompson, say hi. I will. <laughs> I haven't seen her since the uh, Bay Area Broadcast uh, Hall of Fame Awards. Right. And I was looking at a picture the other day of you and I at the awards. You know, you yeah. came to that when I got it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, uh, uh, Charlie. Good talking to you. What does your shirt say? Oh, uh, this is uh, square root of minus four equals two. It's all fun and games until somebody loses, loses an, an eye. eye. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, there's uh, Brian Neary. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it, Jeff. You haven't said much of anything today, but what the hell? It's good having you here. And Thank finally, you. Kevin. Give everybody give a big round of applause for Kevin uh, and uh, give yourself a big round of applause and wave goodbye because that's it for us and I'm going to just say goodbye to you. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another one uh, getting together right after this program is over with with uh, uh, Amy Manuel and the intersection. You can call her 
at GabNet Live on Skype. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Night, everybody.